The things I will discuss in this video are guaranteed to help every single athlete perform at the highest level. It doesn't matter what sport you play, what positions you're in, or what races you run. As long as there is a physical skill you need to be good at, these tricks will be exactly what you're looking for. They are both versatile and extremely situation specific and guaranteed to help you be your best. The best part is you don't have to take my word for it. There's a ton of scientific evidence suggesting that this is useful for athletes. In fact, a systematic review looking at over 20 different studies found that this was effective at improving skill related outcomes across a range of sports with 18 studies across 12 different sports showing increases in performance outcomes. On top of that, countless high level athletes use techniques just like this. And if you choose not to use them, you will leave potential gains in performance on the table, allowing your competitors to get the upper hand on you and reducing the likelihood of achieving your goals. So I'll stop beating around the bush. I'll tell you guys exactly what I'm talking about. And then I'll tell you the best ways to implement it to gain the most possible benefits. What I am talking about is psychological skills training, such as imagery. Imagery has been shown to be super effective across a wide range of scenarios. It can do things as specific as increasing the accuracy of a serve in tennis to something as broad as increasing your strength if you use it properly. Researchers don't even know exactly why imagery is so effective, but there are a few theories as to why it works. One of those is called the psychoneuromuscular theory. This is the idea that by vividly imagining yourself performing an action, your brain fires the exact same neural pathways as if you were actually performing that action, so you can strengthen those neural pathways just as much as if you were practicing your sport, making them faster and more efficient without doing anything physical. That means it's possible to get better at physical skills without the limiting factor of bodily fatigue. There's no limit to how often you can imagine something, but there's definitely a limit to how frequently you can do things like plyometrics, sprinting, lifting, jumping, or other physical activities. So now I'm going to cover five tricks for getting the most out of your imagery training to maximize your performance. First, we have to imagine the potential mechanism making this work in the first place. Imagining an action is making the same neural pathways fire in our brain as if we actually did the activity. But if we only imagine one small aspect of the sport activity we want to improve at, we will only fire one small subset of the neural pathways that we want to be activating. For example, if we're only imagining what we would be seeing in a scenario, we're missing out on the things we would be hearing, the physical sensations we would be feeling, the things we would be smelling, etc. So what we want to do instead is imagine the situation in as much detail as possible. We want to include every little detail and sense that we can to have the most complete image in our heads because that will give us the most gains in our performance. Second, we can't just include the things that we would be experiencing and sensing, such as the crowd and our competitors around us. Those things are important, but the research suggests that we also have to include our own reaction to those external stimuli. So instead of just imagining the sound of the crowd, it might be useful to imagine your reaction to the sound of the crowd, whether that might be an increase in respiration rate or your heart be quickening or even your hands shaking. Third, in order to create the most carryover to the skill we want to improve, the timing is also really important. It's really similar to the process of physically practicing. When you're first learning a new skill, you might break it down piece by piece and go through it really slowly. But over time, you increase your speed and go faster and faster until you're practicing at the actual speed of competition because of course, that's what'll be required to compete. That's really similar to how imagery should go. It might be beneficial to start out imagining things slowly and just go one piece at a time. But as you construct a better and better mental image, you wanna go through it faster and faster until you get as close to real time in your head head as possible. That will cause the reactions in your brain and body to be the closest to the sports scenario that you can achieve. Fourth, on the day of competition, you want to use imagery to target the right level of psychological arousal. So if you're someone who tends to get really anxious before competition, then you might want to use imagery that biases calm feelings. However, if you're someone that gets drained and super tired before competition, then you would want to use thoughts and images that bring feelings of excitement and energy. Instead of just thinking about your own actions, maybe you could think about beating your competitors and how good it will feel to have your team cheering for you as you go. Everyone is different, so the most important thing is to keep in mind your own strengths and weaknesses weaknesses and use those to tailor your imagery practice to your needs. Fifth, keep in mind that using psychological training techniques is not the same as using physical ones like sprint work, lifting, or doing your sport. You don't have to do it really intensely for a short period of time and then take a long break for your body to recover. In fact, you can do it every day, all year round, and you probably should. Studies have shown that imagery is far more effective when it's completed over a longer period of time. So if you want the best results, you should do imagery for 10 to 30 minutes a day or even longer every single day consistently for as long as you can, whether that's weeks or months or even years years leading up to a competition. The thing is, everything I've talked about is pretty much useless if you aren't doing physical training as well. And so many athletes from all different sports consistently neglect one of the most important aspects of physical performance, their speed. If you want science-based tips for getting faster than you've ever been, check out this video here. Thank you for watching.